What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Today we got another huge update. It's not got clips surfacing that they were trying to hide and tuck away. That they didn't want you to see this one. The current state condition of this guy, Joe Biden, the big guy, the head man in charge. And it is sad, you guys. I'm going to leave it there. I'm excited to get into the clip, see exactly what's the current state. So we're going to get straight to the clips and I'll save my thoughts for the back end, guys. So definitely stick around to the end. So I just get my thoughts on the back end. And also, YouTube push this video out. Definitely stick around to the end, you guys. But let's get straight into it, see exactly how the big guy is. Before we do that, though, make sure you guys hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button as well. Rose the truth. Hop aboard for the journey. Let's get into it, y'all. <laughs> Thank, uh, thank you uh, for, uh, you know, I said, Bishop, it's good to be home. Please sit down. Believe me. Is that for anybody who's ever been discouraged? I don't. Feel no waste time. Oh. Let us stand together. Oh. The cross, at the cross, at the cross, cross where, where I first saw the light and the, the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by I faith, faith I received my sight, sight and now I am.
House Democrats are holding emergency talks in Washington, D.C. to discuss the viability of Joe Biden's candidacy. The president attended a church service today as his campaign works to quell concerns he's not physically fit enough to serve another four years. Seems that sit-down interview hasn't done much. Let's go to our Washington correspondent, Annalise Nielsen, for more. Now, Annalise, Joe Biden insisting he's still staying in the race. And look, they're putting up a good fight. There's a lot of events on Joe Biden's calendar over the next few days. And this week, we also have the NATO summit in Washington, D.C. So they're hoping to ride this storm out. But this is the Sunday before another congressional week. And so we are going to have House members and senators in the Capitol. And they're going to have to answer questions when reporters ask if they think Joe Biden should run again. Now, there's been a phone call with some senior Democrat leaders in the House of Representatives today. There's information leaking out of that meeting that at least four people on the call have said Joe Biden does need to step aside and they've voiced their support for Kamala Harris taking over. It takes a lot more, of course, to have a presidential candidate step aside at this point in the race when they're at the incumbent nonetheless. And Joe Biden has been out trying to put his case to the public. One interesting bit of information that's come out today is the first interview that was landed by a journalist from the Biden administration after Joe Biden's disastrous debate performance was with a radio station, a black owned radio station. The anchor has admitted that the White House gave the list of questions that they were allowed to ask and weren't allowed to waver off of. And the radio station in question word has now parted ways with that anchor because they said it didn't meet the standards of journalism that they hold themselves out to as an independent radio station. This shows just how tightly controlled Joe Biden is even after that fairly uninspiring uh, sit down interview with George Stephanopoulos, which didn't uh, make the position any worse, but certainly didn't turn any minds in the positive direction either. So what we're seeing is these highly scripted moments from Joe Biden as he's out of the campaign. Folks, I know with every fiber of my being, I know I won't look like I'm 40 years old, but I've been around a little bit. (laughs) Well, all kidding aside, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And I, honest to God, have never been more optimistic about America's future if we stick together. I really mean it. What we're seeing is a very different dynamic from the press here in the US. More Democrats, as they do interviews, are being pushed on whether they think Joe Biden is fit to run for another four years. And they're becoming more and more assertive in their answers. What I would advise the president is seek out the opinions of people you trust. Uh, He's obviously talked to his family about this, and that's important. But he should seek out people with some distance and objectivity. Uh, He should seek out pollsters who are not his own pollsters. Uh, He should take a moment to make the best informed judgment. Uh, And if the judgment is run, then run hard and beat that SOB. I, you know, I think it's uh, incredible how presidents get so insulated and sometimes from reality. And I think we saw that uh, with the president the other night. Like, you can't deny it. And it's not just the polls. I mean, I'm here in Ohio. Like, just you can't go to a coffee shop. You can't go to a bar. You can't go to a soccer game where people aren't talking about this uh, in a negative sense. And- Yo, there we have it, guys. This news is gone worldwide. This is no longer just, you know, um, America mainstream news networks, news outlets that are covering this and that know about Joe Biden's, you know, cognitive state. Um, his, his mental acuity right now is on the decline. Everyone's seeing that, you know, it's not just us Americans that are, you know, debating and pandering whether or not, you know, Joe Biden can stay in this race. The whole world is looking like, oh my goodness, no way the Americans are this silly, this foolish to keep this guy or keep putting this guy up, gaslight, lying and trying to Tell the American people, paint this picture, say that this guy is fit enough to tie his shoes, lace them up, get dressed, and serve as a president every day. I just don't see it, guys, especially not for four years if they can, you know, continue to dress this up um, or even get this guy in the face of the public. We're already seeing, you know, um, timelines and restrictions, very strict restrictions on, you know, his media appearances like we're seeing right here. The They're covering that um, following that disastrous 90-minute debate performance. We're seeing that his following public appearance, you know, on that um, talk show host, 
the black talk show host. And they're saying that that was a strict script of questions that the White House provided, the Biden administration provided to the, <clears throat> excuse me, the radio station in order for them to follow along the script um, uh, they've provided for Joe Biden, make sure they don't go off and they can prepare and train him for every single question. Um, of course, they adhere to the, the request of the White House because, come on, it's the White House. But, you know, upon reflection and, and they, they thought on it, they're like, we can't hear this out. We have to just trash the whole thing because this isn't how we rock as um, independent journalists, independent media. That's another reason why I enjoy you know independent media, independent journalism, because you're going to get the raw. You're going to get the real. There is no donor backing, um, no George Soros that is making them stick to the talking point, stick to the script. By the administration, they're way different, guys. They think they control all media. You're seeing right here, the independent journalists, independent media are not afraid to, you know, put the truth out there. They're not placating, gaslighting the line of the viewers no longer. They're going to make sure that the truth is known because I know that that disastrous 90 minute debate performance that we've seen coming from Joe Biden, um, it came as no shock. It came as no shock to those on the right. It was only a surprise to those on the left who had been lied to or had been fed all these, you know, gaslight, placating, you know, and that, that, that optic, the illusion of an actual stable president. They've been fed that media through all the mainstream media outlets on the left that have been trying to lie and paint that picture. And so this is all a big shock to them. That's why we're seeing this huge panic, this chaos ensuing on the left, not only between the voters, but also, you know, Democratic leaders who are trying to, you know, go for the next steps. Who do we swap him out? The big replacement. There is obviously no way that we're going to keep this guy in the race, keep trying to guess, like paint this picture, say that he's okay. But then again, you know, all the campaign finances are tied to Kamala Harris. If Biden does decide to drop out of the race, honestly, not sure if they want to go with her though that may not be their best foot forward so then that even further entangles this whole thing this whole mess of campaign finances hundreds of millions of dollars that will be essentially gone or wasted if they select a, a totally new candidate to put in our place of joe biden and kamala harris guys this thing is looking very bad and i don't think it has any chance of turn around or you know any uh upside for the dems um and i usually try to look for any way that they can weasel the way out or you know turn things around but i just don't see the light for them right now guys definitely hop in the comment section though let me know your thoughts guys do you see any way out of this for the dems guys do you see the light at the end of the tunnel where they will be able to overcome and somehow beat Donald Trump. I just don't see it right now, guys. Definitely hop in the comment section. Let me know what you're thinking. Also, make sure you guys hit that share button. Shows out to me. Facebook friends as possible. Guys, share the truth. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button. Doesn't cost one thing. You guys hit that like button for your boy. And also hit that subscribe button as we're on the road to the truth. Hop aboard for the journey. I'll catch you guys on the next one. We go.